In this video, I'm going to explain what jitter charts or jitter graphs are, why you want to use them as opposed to other choices, and I'm going to show you what some of the other choices are, and then how to make them in Excel. And this is one of the examples right here. Um, so you can see there's all of these dots uh, showing U.S. public pensions five-year annualized rate of return on assets. And then there are these line graphs of 75th percentile, median, and 25th percentile. And I'm very happy with how this turned out. So let me take you on a journey of how I got here. Uh, <laughs> and uh, let us go back into the bloggy archives to see how I ended up here. These are not exactly the same data sets, but it's the same visualization problem. Basically, I have a distribution that is changing over time, or I have different distributions that I want to compare. And in this case, I was doing a visualization that, um, in a way that another organization was doing it. I was using a different data source from them. Um, I was using the public plans database to look at a discount rate that uh, pension plans were using, but the whole point was I was showing a certain percentage of um, the plans had an assumption between a certain set, and you can see it's uh, you know, done in a certain way. This is quite confusing. You can kind of see how there's a migration of this distribution, but it's still difficult to visualize. And then I have the median, uh, this is a very boring median, but the median graphed out. I could have also graphed out the 25th and 75th percentile if I had wanted to. Um, <laughs> Um, but this is very confusing, especially since the median is on an axis that's on the right hand side and the percentages are on a on the left hand side and it gets very confusing. So my second attempt was a more traditional way of graphing distributions, which is called a box plot. And with a box plot, and it's difficult to see what I did here because of the choices I had made, and this is made in Excel. There is a line which is difficult to see, but the line in the middle is the median, and it's I'm using my cursor here to show where the median is. Um, the lower end of the box is the 25th percentile, and yes, it was at zero for many years, and then it's the 75th percentile is the top of the box. Then it has these whiskers that are based on the interquartile range. That's from the 25th to the 75th percentile. Those whiskers are extended. And I used the option in Excel where it is plotting all of the data points. So I thought, okay, I've got a box plot. It's showing the box. It shows the quartiles and it shows the whiskers. The problem with the box plot, of course, is I'm always having to explain what the heck that box is. Okay, and so finally, here is my revelation, and it came from a Society of Actuaries report. Okay, this is something else entirely. No boxes, this is not a box plot. It's all of the data points, each point, is on this vertical axis of these annuity factors. So this is plotting something else entirely. And each data point is plotted. Now they're overlapping so you can't see all the dots. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the yellow diamond is the unweighted average for the group, each group. The black dots use a particular mortality table, which is RP-2014 as their base table, but obviously it can have been, um, sorry, it can have been projected using certain mortality improvement, yada, yada. But then you're, you're saying, okay, but then why are they spread out horizontally? And that's what the jitter chart is. Jitter charts are where you spread out points 
um, say horizontally and sometimes vertically from where they should land so they're not all on top of each other. If I go back to the box plot, so if I go back to this box plot, all of these dots are lined up at the same horizontal point if I spread them out because you can't tell if there's dots plotted on top of each other. So with a jitter chart, I separate them out. I jitter them out randomly horizontally. So now I can see separate points. I can see the data points. I can get rid of these boxes. I can put lines over so I can see key percentiles if I want and then label those percentiles. Um, I can see all of the data points and that's the concept of the jitter chart. I don't have to do a lot of explanation. So with a box plot, and this is the weakness of a box plot, is you have to have a lot of knowledge. So generally box plots are useful if you're you know, a statistician because everybody knows box plots. Um, you don't have to explain a line chart. You don't have to explain a pie chart. You don't have to explain a bar chart. Everybody knows what those are. Those are basic chart types, but a box plot I'm always having to explain. And if you think that's bad, violin charts and some of the really complicated charts that are out there, ah, if you are graphing the data directly, which is what you're doing in a jitter chart, but just doing some artificial jittering you know sideways in a direction that it makes no difference then you're giving a visual impact you see all the data you can see where it's densest yeah because one can do a heat map that's another way to show density or distribution but you're still ending up having to explain so here's an example that i've got prepped this is my data. The X values are the fiscal years and my Y values are the average, I believe, five year or maybe 10 year average returns from the public pensions. Um, I can't remember, but it's average returns uh, for the pension plans. And you can see there's a lot of overlap and they're all lined up on the years because of course these are full years. So I do want to jitter this at least horizontally. So how do I do this? So this is the pre-jittered data. I have plotted this if you want to see what this is. So the chart design, if I go to chart design, you'll see if I go to chart type that it is a scatter plot. I have the, um, this formatted so that the markers are circles obviously that it has a solid line for the border of the markers and then it has solid fill but it's mostly transparent like 85 percent transparent um, the reason why i do want it a little bit darker as the markers overlap so that you can see where it's more or less dense uh, where the markers overlap so i can jitter this horizontally um, and what I use, and people will make fun of this, I use the RAND function. RAND will give you a number between 0 and 1. Um, I don't like using the RAND function for serious purposes. So this is a semi-serious purpose. If you're using pseudo-random number generation for something serious like Monte Carlo, estimation of various things and i you know i should do a video on you know what you use monte carlo for later the whole point of data visualization is so that you can oops sorry uh so that you can see something it doesn't matter you don't need visual regularity you don't need strong <laughs> pseudo random number generation uh, you don't need the kinds of things that say uh, strong crypto needs from a pseudo random number generator you don't need certain statistical properties that monte carlo needs for a good statistical estimator that comes out of monte carlo you need something that doesn't create visual artifacts uh, horizontally so we don't want grids and stuff coming out of this and rand works just fine and the way you call rand is just rand um, 
<laughs> Rand and then uh, the parentheses. So I'm going to copy and paste. Oops, sorry, paste is values. Um, so I just want these as uh, constant values in there. And you'll see that these are just values. I ran it once and then let it sit. Now, you don't want to apply these jitter factors. First off, it goes from zero to one, and we want this centered around the fiscal year. So we kind of want it to go from negative a half to positive of half, and maybe not that much. So that's why I have this offset and scale. And so you'll see I have a formula here. Okay. So I take my original X. So that's B5. I'm going to add <laughs> the offset. So that's the minus 0.25, so minus a quarter, okay? Plus, okay, the scale times that RAND. So I'm going to scale down that random number generator so that it, it scales to a certain amount. So I'm going to have a corridor around that. So I'm going to jitter the X. So I can jitter the X, I can jitter the Y. Now, the reason I have jittered Y, I don't need it for this data set, but sometimes you do. And I needed it for a different data set where the Y was repeated. Um, because th these Ys don't overlap, so the verticals don't overlap so much for this data set, I don't need to jitter the Y. But if you have too much overlapping for the Y, you might need to jitter the vertical as well. So let me uh, do a post jittered data. So let's select our data. So the what I want to jitter is not the Y, but the X. So I'm going to do this. We'll say, okay. Okay, and let's see what happens with our post jitter data. I actually have to come all the way up here. What's our post jitter data looks like? Oh, okay, so now it's all very fat. Maybe I need to put it on its own tab. Let's move our chart to its own sheet so we can take a look at what it looks like now. And so now it's spread out. We can take a look at what these look like. We can kind of see where it's concentrated. It's still kind of difficult for this specific data set, given it's really, this distribution is really bunched up in the middle, though we can see this general wave pattern. Uh, for this data set. So let's take a look. This might be the five-year rate of return. No, I think this is the 10-year. Yeah, given the wave pattern, this is the 10-year rate of return chart. And um, I, I graphed these lines on top of it. That was very easy. I just did a scatter plot and put lines. You can do dots and connect the dots as one of the options in a scatter plot. I didn't even need to do a combination graph. You can uh, do a scatter plot with lines and just do that. And I had a legend here to um, do that. So that's how I did this graph. Now we can see how the distribution changes over time we can see the all of the dots and you'll notice i actually um, de-emphasized i believe i actually got rid of the for this graph i got rid of the border and i just did the fill so that you can see where there's most overlap and least overlap for the data points um, and then you can see the percentiles the key percentiles and how that's changed over time all I wanted to show was the volatility of the returns, and this was a 10-year average and how that's changed over time. And that was my main point of this graph um, to see how spread out the distribution of the 10-year average was for these different plans and then how these changed over time, um, how a distribution moved. And I'm very happy with this result. Uh, and then ultimately, I came up with a graph, my assumptions versus reality. I'm very happy with this one, where I have the distributions. So that's my wave graph. So we see that going in the, in the back. But what are these lines? These lines are the percentiles for the assumed rate of the return. And we can see the volatility of the long-term average 
versus the very non-volatile <laughs> assumptions that are very different from where those averages are ending up. Um, but you know, this is this is why we want data visualization. You can see it. This is why I wanted to use a jitter chart for the entire distribution. All the data are there. Every single data point I had is in this chart uh, for the 10 year average. I love it. Um, you know, this is, I'm very happy with how this has evolved from that original, you know, 100% stacked column chart, which was very difficult to interpret visually. This is so much easier to interpret visually. Um, it's far more persuasive in my opinion. That's why I like j jitter charts. So like, you know, every time I come across a chart type that I think that you can really see how the data behave, use those jitter charts. They're really easy. They're really easy to make. As you can see, I just used, this is an Excel. You don't need any special software. You don't need to know how to use R. You don't need Python, nothing special. Just use RAND scatter plots and a little bit of formatting. And I use the Society of Actuaries theme, but you can use whatever theme you want. It looks pretty. I'd, just a couple of steps. I really didn't do anything special. There you go.